Hi everyone, welcome to my space. I'm Freedom and let's dive into data. For the past couple of weeks, I've been showing you Excel dashboards, talked about pivot tables. Today will be a continuation of our Excel series where I'll be exploring some features in Excel that just make sense. I hope it just makes sense. And today we'll be focusing on Power Query. I've heard of Power Query before. Power Query is a tool in Excel or let's say future, you can also find it as a Power BI, is used to extract, transform, and load data into your workbook or your Power BI. So today we'll be exploring what Power Query could do on our Excel workbook. And we could extract data from multiple sources. All you just have to do is from your whole, you could go to the data or your rebound, you see get data, you could see multiple sources, you could get from your file, from workbook, from your text or CSV file, your XML, and many other from PDF, from your databases, you could get from SQL, you could get from Oracle, you could get from MySQL, depending on the database you're working on. You could also get from online sources like SharePoint, Microsoft Exchange, Salesforce, and you could get from other sources like from web, table, Microsoft queries, and many other sites you could want to get your data from. So today I'll be focused on getting data from web, from our table or range, and also from a text and CSV file, which I know every one of us use. So stay with me as we explore Power Query in Excel. If you're just joining us, like, subscribe, and share. Let's get into our book. Okay, guys, let's explore our Power Query together. So let's say we want to import data. Like I said, we could import data from multiple sources. We want to import data from a range or a table that we already have in our workbook. Let's say you already have this data series, this data on your workbook, then you want to import it into Power Query. It is also very much possible. All you have to do is to go to our data in our ribbon, then get data from table and range. It will pick up the range of data already in your workbook and load it up into the Power Query Editor. So just in case you don't have it laid out like this, you could also click on Get Data, go to Other from Other Sources, you see your table and range. So when you click, it picks out, I think I'm clicking wrong. Yeah, let's close this and do it again. So let's click on this, click on Table and Range, it picks up the range of data here. So when I click OK, it opens up our Power Query editor for us, where we are going to transform our data. So it's loading up. And this data is just an inventory data. It's a simple inventory data you could see. And you could easily transform it into however you want. You could add columns. You could transform your data. And on the home page, you could see all the steps you could take. You could split your data column by delimiter, number of characters, by position, by lowercase, uppercase. You could group your data and also you could check our data type. That's the first thing to do in each time you open your data is also check your data type. Are they correctly? Are they well arranged? By columns, can you see this is our unit price, this is our cost, this is our quantity available, quantity sold, our product name. This is the area, this is the address of customer of the store. This is the city of the store. And all the infos and the data sets. So the data set is still loading, but you could explore a lot of things using your Power Query. Like you could merge queries. If you have multiple um, tables you want to merge, you could merge them together. Just like you're using VLOOKUP or SLOOKUP. It just makes it look better, you know. And also, what else can you do? You could merge parameters. No, I know you could this. And you could bring in from other sources, which I'm going to be showing you today. Because I said we're just we're not just importing from our table and range, we'll be importing CSV file and also from our web. So those are where our main focus on today's lesson. And maybe next time I'll talk about how to bring from an SQL database or something else, just to make it a little bit more fun. 
But now let's just do a few things on this, our data. If we're trying to transform this, let's say we want to add columns. So we'll go to add column. You could see we have custom columns. We have conditional columns where we could explore the, if you want to categorize your data using like the if functions, we could easily do that using this. And also want to use a custom column where you want to write directly into it. So let the custom column roll. So yeah, you could say, let's find our total sales. There's sales and our sales will be quantity sold multiplied by unit price. Can you see? All I have to do is click OK. I need to add the sales. Can you see? To add the sales into our table. Can you see? And so if we make it more easier, we could also do the same calculation by just clicking our quantity and our unit price. Go to standardize under add column and click multiply. And they'll give us the same results, just like where we say we want to use a custom column formats instead of this. So there's a lot you could explore using your Power Query. So we don't need this. We could cancel this. And what else do you want to find? Okay, this is cost and this is sales. Our profit is cost minus sales. So let's click on our sales. Subtracted by cost. Then we have those two clicked and we, all we have to do is say subtract. And it's going to give us our profits. And all you just have to do is rename this. Give us our profits. So this is a dummy data. You can find it on the description below if you want to follow along. And let's bring in our other data sets from different sources. So first also bring in from our file, which will be our text as CSV file that we are going to be exploring. So this is our data sets, we, I'll also add this in the description as well. So you could play around with it. It's loading into our Power Query now. Like I said, it could load from multiple. So now all I have to do is click OK to bring this file into my Power Query editor. And I forgot to mention every step you take on your Power Query will be set here and you could easily correct them you should make it around this name so let's rename our table this one let's say this is inventory this is inventory and so on this new data set we have multiple things we see we can see all these things here we have the region we have the products category we have the product name we have the quantity unit price what i want us to explore on this one is the date formats and how you could expand your dates. If you just don't want to see the dates, let's say you want to try, you want to create a date table using this. Let's duplicate this. Let me show you some. So when you duplicate your table, all you have to do is click on the dates format, the date here, which is our order dates, right click and remove other columns. Afterwards, you right click and you remove duplicates. So now our date is just specifically for our table so let me change this to dates table so now from here we could extract our month let's go to add column you can extract month name of month can you see we already have name of months and most times you might not want it to be in full then that's where you go to transform then you extract Let's say we are extracting the first character. That's the first three characters in those words. Let's say three. So I said, okay. So it's to extract the first three and leave the, remove the rest for you. So that's what extracting does as well. So we can click on other date again, add column. Click on the dates. You want to see the days, just the days of the month. So if you click this, it will load in the days of the month. Can you see? To show you all the days in the month, I click OK. We could also show the weekday, the name of the day. Can you see? And if you want to transform this, you transform, you extract, make it three. The first character, you make it three. And you click OK. So these are just few of the steps you could take on your Power Query editor. 
and you could do a lot of things. Okay, um, one more thing we could do on our event tree. Uh, let's say we want to use the delimiter here. Let's transform, we're still transform. Let's extract the text before delimiter. Okay. So now we could just have our chocolate bar, pepper, chick, and other things. I think one more thing I have to use to bring one more source I want to try out is scrapping from web. So web scrapping with Power Query is like one of the most amazing things you could do with Power Query. It makes your life so easy. So let's say we want to scrap from, let me go to a web. Uh, we want to scrap the word um, billionaires from 2024, 2025. So we're going, we're scrapping from Wikipedia. So let's copy this. Then go to our Power Query. All we have to do is go to new source, to go to online services, no other sources, and we click web. Click on our web, we drop the URL link and click OK. So it connects with the with the web for us. So it extracts all the tables and all the data on the web. As you can see, it opened our navigation. And yeah, to load out all the tables and information you could find on that web. So let's wait for it to load. And so it opened up and we could see our table one trying to preview. So this is not the table we're looking for. We're looking for table two and three, which is the billionaires in 2025, top 10 billionaires in 2025, which is this. And table three, which is top 10 billionaires in 2024. So let's for select multiple items on this web page. Just click on select multiple. So we have to click on table two. Click on table two and also table three as well. So all we have to do is say okay and load them into our Power Query. And you can see with our Power Query editor, we could link it to multiple sources without having to leave your Power Query editor. So in case you're trying to bring in multiple items from different sources, you don't have to close your Power Query, open it again, or go back to your data and load it up. You can load everything directly from this place. So as you can see, you can see our data. This is table two, which is below 2025 billionaires. Let's say 2025, top 10 billionaires. Top 10 billionaires. And this is 2024. So not just that you could um, scrap just billionaires on the site, you will scrap any kind of data you want. And after you scrap them, you could make any changes you want. Um, looking at this, let's say I want to use the if function now. So let's go to add column. Let's use a conditional column. That's what we're going to use. So let's say if the age is less than or equal to 59, let's say the, the billionaire is young. Let's say he's young. And another clause will be if the same age is greater than 60, we'll take them as old. So let's see how many old and young billionaires we have. You can see we have a lot more old billionaires than young ones. I need to be a young billionaire someday. And for this now, we want to say, let's pick one one country for Elon Musk. It cannot just be from South Africa, Canada, and US at the same time. So at least US, there's a lot of US here. So let's give it to South Africa. So let's change this, replace values. So I just need to, I want to just see South Africa. So I replace it with South Africa. I click OK. So, so we have one billionaire from South Africa now. So yeah. For 2024, we could also do the same thing. Replace value. And copy from this. So 
So the next thing after you've transformed your data you brought into your Power Query editor is to load them into your sheets. And to load them into your sheets, you could either load, close and load, or load to. So load to is one thing I always speak because it gives me an opportunity to load to my power pivots and add to my data model. Are you with me? So that way I'm able to load my data from my power query directly to my, my power pivot and add data model. So let's say I want to load into a table, but at the same time, I want it to be added to data model just in case I want to create relationships and do other things on power pivots. So, but we talk about power fields when they start for power fields. But for now, just it's a teaser. And so when we click OK, it loads our queries and connections. It loads everything into our files. We'll take, we'll take a moment because there are different sources and different data. And it's going to load up pretty soon. So depending on the kind of laptop you use or the kind of compressor you have, it depends on, we determine the kind of speed your system will be operating on. So let's take note of that as well. So let's wait for it to load up and it's loading, it's also creating relationships as well. Can you see? So it loaded up all the tables. So now we have, we have 1000 rows on inventory. We have 700 on this data. We have a date table as well. We also have top 25 billion years, 2024. So you could see everything is loaded up into our sheets, into different sheets. Can you see? Into different sheets. And why I added it to data model, this is it. Let me show you an example. So you go to your power pivot. If this is not shown, you could own it from your settings. Go to manage your data model. So when you click on your data model, all the data you loaded is can be shown in your power pivot. So let's click on the diagram. I want to see them in diagram in table formats. Can you see? So you could easily create a relationship between all these things if they were related. So I think the only thing related here has to be um, the 2024 and 2025 billionaires. And let's say we want to create a relationship with this. So this. See, we could create that because there's a relationship. The numbers are the relationship here. So I know we created the dates table using the order, order dates. So we could use the other dates connected to this. So this is just a little teaser of how Power Pivot works and how you could create relationships. But for now, we're not going to be using this. Going to be using this. So, but from here, you could see that you could easily load into pivot tables directly from here. So, but it's all good. Let's. So this brings us to the end of today's lesson on Power Query. And Power Query can be used with multiple sources, like I mentioned. It is a very powerful tool to understand and to know. You learn new things every day using Excel. I promise you that. And this is giving us another opportunity to touch a future in Excel that just makes sense. Tune in. I'll be going deeper into Power Pivots and show you one of the few metrics that make sense in Power Pivots as well. So have a nice day. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of the day. And bye. Like, subscribe, and share. I don't, I shouldn't forget that. So have a good day. Bye, guys.